thing I started recording after I said shit. So let me know if anyone has questions from homework stuff. I am in the process of grading. Uh, I think I got most people's 2-1 graded maybe. And maybe, I can't remember. I've done so much grading, I'm tired. Um, um, go ahead. Um, since I joined the class late, I'm still trying to catch up on work. Would it be better for me to do the work that's late or the, to do uh, what's due most recently? Yeah, you, let me see. Did well, I just turned into 1.1. Yeah, the next quiz is going to be on chapter two. So you might as well, if you haven't done chapter one yet, don't, don't necessarily worry about that. Your primary focus should be chapter two. Okay. And you do right. chapter one as you can. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Uh, anything else? Anybody other questions from homework or technical issues or anything? Anybody else brave enough to turn on their camera nope. to help me not go insane? Did someone? Is somebody trying to say something? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was Thank making you. sure my mic was working. Oh yeah. You got. Oh, perfect. I do have a question. When yes. making the histogram without being specified whether you're using the frequency or relative frequency, in that case, we just use the uh, the data value and the frequency. You could, yeah. If they don't specify, then you could actually use either one you want to. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Um, I have a question for. The homework assignment 2.3, do you think you can go over number 25? Because I'm confused on how to go through it, like having to. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Here we go. So the book has a very convoluted way to do percentages, which is really dumb percentiles. I mean, um, now listen, listen, listen. So in this problem, Jesse is ranked 37th in a class of 180, right? Uh, what would be the best ranking? Of course, you want to be ranked number one. One. So how many people are ranked lower than Jesse if he's 37th? 36. No, you're thinking about it the wrong way. I just try to oh, make it really oh, good. Uh, right. Number uh, one is best. You? Number one is best. He is 37th. How many are ranked below him? 143. Yes, 143 out of how many total? 180. Okay, that's that problem's done. Next. Do you understand? Yeah. 43 out of 180, make it a percentage, you're done. Yeah, so it's the book's method is silly for small sets of data. And for large sets of data, it matches with the way that the rest of us do things, right? So, yeah. Uh, but if you want to do the books method, you can. It's just really gross, and it comes out to the same answer. Believe it or not, it's crazy. Uh, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. But that's the basic idea of percentiles, right? Percentiles capture the percentage below a whatever value. So that's how we do the problem. We figure out how many are below that value out of the total. Oh, let me. Good Lord. Hello, email. Let me keep you quiet. Bam. What did I just do? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, anything else before we get into what we're going to talk about today? By the way, while I'm thinking about it, what is this behind me? Did I? I don't think I talked about this, did I? What's behind me there? The moon? Uh, no. The is moon. Is this is planet? Mars. Yeah, the red planet. A planet, that's right, a planet. More specifically, Mars. Anyone know what's happening with Mars tomorrow? It's going to hit the Earth. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's gonna, we have sent another rover, but this rover is going to take core samples, and it also has a helicopter on it that's going to fly around Mars a little bit. Yes, kids, you heard me correctly. Uh, this kicks so much ass. And then about 10 years from now, we'll send another little spacecraft up to collect the sample that this one is going to get and bring it back to earth so of course you know that's the opening scene of a horror movie so just be ready we're going to have 
Martian monsters uh, in a little uh, over a decade, right? It'll make 2020 look like nothing. But anyway, uh, that could not happen. That, that might, that's just a possibility, but more than likely it won't happen. Uh, anyway, so tomorrow there's going to be coverage of the whole thing of them watching to see, hopefully it doesn't smack into the surface of Mars like something else we sent up there. Um, real Do you quick, believe for, in aliens? Uh, yes. Now, now, I love it. You guys are going to look at me like I'm insane, but how many planets are in the universe, right? It, it's almost, it's a question of probability. So do I believe that aliens have come here and taken people and done weird things with various parts of their anatomy? No, I don't. Do I believe that there is other life in the universe? Yes, I do. Do, do I have evidence of that? No, I don't. Not necessarily, but there is really good evidence of, well, there's evidence of past life on Mars. There's evidence of possibility on Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter. That's enough of that, that's enough of that. I don't want you guys, I'm not that guy from the whatever channel it is. There's aliens. No, no, I don't know if you guys know that meme. Um, anyway, so no, I don't wear my tin foil hat and watch the skies. I seen them up there. They're coming. They took my dog. No, uh, but there probably is other life in the universe. In fact, it would be almost impossible for there not to be. Okay. Anything related to statistics now? <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. I, I guess I brought that whole thing up, but, uh, Anything else from homework or in general? All right. Okay. Did you guys see, I did send an email out, I believe, about this here. Let me show you. Um, where'd they go? The extra office hours. Why do you look like that now? This is weird. All right. Right here, the extra office hours. So I have office hours right before class, 12.30 to 1.30. And now I have uh, Tuesdays, 11 to 12, and Thursdays, 2 to 3. That's for all of my classes. So if you want to go to one of these, you have to actually use the correct link, right? So there's the link for the Tuesday sessions. There's the link for the Thursday sessions, right? So don't use the class link. That's crazy. Use one of these and use the correct link in here. Okay, okay. Do you have to come to those? Of course not. And by the way, I forgot to say this the first day, but if you have a class that has a schedule time in the schedule, right? Like this class that has a schedule time in the schedule, your instructor cannot require you to meet any other time outside of that time. They cannot require you to meet at other times because that was happening for some of my students last semester uh, and that's not right. You don't know. So if any of your instructors make you meet at other times, they're not allowed to. They can have office hours. They can have workshops. They can have other things. But anyway, okay. If there's no other questions, I'm going to jump right into, uh, we're going to finish off chapter two today. If there's no other questions, okay. All right, I'll take that as a no. Um, so let me pull this over. Let's see. Today is going to be interesting. We, well, first thing I want to do, first thing I want to do, let me show you where to go for this. Go right back in here. If you go to modules right now, is anybody not able to access Canvas right now? Can everybody access Canvas right now? Sometimes it depends on how you're connected. All right, I'm going to take that as a, Everybody can access Canvas. This is what I'm seeing. Go to Canvas right now, go to unit two and get the measures of center practice sheet. Get this sheet right here. Holy sheet. Get that sheet right there. And then start doing it. By the way, I think I forgot to talk about mid-range, so I'll do that real quick. What's the sheet called? Uh, measures of center practice. So again, it's modules. The way I got my module set up, there's unit zero, unit one, unit two. That's where you go for um, 
worksheets associated with those chapters. And then of course, below that's where you turn in homework. So go to unit two, this one. We're gonna do this one later today, but this one is what we're gonna do right now. Because the last thing we did was, well, actually the last thing we did was we talked about uh, box plots and percentiles and stuff, right? This sheet is to remind us of the measures of center and then to get us ready for this next freaky ass thing, the standard deviations. All right, so has everybody got that sheet? Measures of center practice. All right, so if you got that sheet, I'm gonna do this. I don't know if you've already started working, but I'm gonna go ahead and break you guys up now. Since there's four groups of data, I'm gonna break you up into groups of four. And then maybe you can figure out how to make it quicker to get through the sheet. We'll see. All right, so our favorite thing in the world to do, I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna make breakout rooms. Uh, does everybody understand what's happening? Anybody not understand? What's up, Nikki? Are you gonna go over mid range? Oh shit, yeah, thank you. Mid range very quickly. Let me turn off Mars. Interesting time we're living in where that phrase actually makes sense. Oh, there's my kitchen. It's, it's all messy. All right, come here. Block my kitchen. All the mid range is. I know. Hold on. All the mid range is. is the average of the high and the low. That's the middle of the range. Do you remember the range was high minus low? Mid range is the middle of the range. So if I have data like two, seven, 11, 15, 19, 28, the mid range would be the high plus the low divided by two. That's all that mid range is. Okay, so with that in mind, let me break you up into groups. I want you to work on this sheet and then I'll bring you back in in a few minutes and we'll do it together. Uh, let's see. I don't think I can get quite exactly four, that sucks. Yes, I can. Oh, good, I love it. All right, guys, here we go. Go for it. Go work on the sheet. Go. Hello. There you go. There you go. Jocelyn. There we go. Okay. You stop recording. So I, I, I stopped into most of the rooms and um, most of the rooms are working to some capacity. One room, no. <laughs> so I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. So even if you're not sure exactly what to do, you could still do something. You can call me in if you need help. Uh, breakout rooms is not nap time. All right, uh, let's see, enough of that. So let's take a look at this bad boy. What'd you guys get for the first few? What was something you noticed for this 13. stuff? Yeah, All everything. Things. Yeah, everything. everything. Everything was 13. Yeah. Hold on, let me do this. Let me see what I can do here. Bluetooth mode. Technology, oh my goodness. So basically 13. So my point with that is, do any of the measures of center differentiate between the data groups? No, every single cent measure center says 13, but are all of the groups the same? No, what's the range? Let me go even further. What's the range for each data group? Everyone has the same high and low, right? So what's the range? 
13. 14. No, 14. No, 14, just kidding. Yeah. 14, just kidding. <laughs> no, 13 was a good guess. <laughs> I could have made it to come out to 13, but it just wasn't that quick on the draw. Now, therefore, the things we know so far do not differentiate for me between the groups of data. So I, I want to have one more number to summarize a group of data. Because if somebody tells me the average is 13, it could be any of these. Even if they tell me the range is 14 and the lowest six and the highest 20, it could be any of these and they are different. They do definitely have differences. So would you say that each group of data is the same? No. Does that agree with what you found in number one? No, right? Because number one, the work you did in number one makes it sound as if they're all the same because they all have exactly the same mean, median, mode, and mid-range. All right, is everybody sort of with me so far, at least? So they're so not the same is, each number means what? a different thing. Say again, sorry? So they're not the same because each number means a different thing. They're not, well, what, so here's the thing. We all can see that they're not the same lists of data but the measures of center seem as if they could be. So now the next kind of couple of questions tries to get at what is actually different about each one. So what'd you guys get for these? Uh, some people are having some trouble with these, but like for A, for group A, how many showed up between six and eight? Just one. One. one thing. Yeah, so who's got the rest of that? One. Zero. Uh, zero. Eight. Eight. Zero. One. Zero. One. All right. Now somebody else tell me for B. Who who did anybody do group B? One. 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 Two. One. Wait, wait. Come at me again. One, two. Oh, yeah. One. one, two. Keep going. Four, two, one. Okay, I like it. Now somebody else tell me group C. Oh. Somebody's chatting at me. All twos, yeah. So group C was kind of the you can you can call them the boring group. What about group D? Group D is the crazy group. Three, one, two, one, and three. I like it. I love it. Okay, now now we see a better picture. So I'm gonna have to. Now I'm gonna kind of push us in the right direction. Which set of data gets away from its mean more? Like if the mean is home, this is the way I like to think of this. The mean is home. Which set of data had more things go away from home? Group D. Say again, group which one? D. B is in boy or D is in dog? B is in dog. Yes, you got it. Because look at group A. Group A had a lot of uh, kids that just wouldn't leave home. And the parents are like, good Lord, get the hell out of my house. All eight of these kids are like staying right around the house. And only a couple of kids went away. And then this one's a little bit better, but these are still pretty close to home, right? And then this one's a little better, right? They kind of spread out. And then this one's the best one where three went really far away and three went really far away. So what is this other thing that we're going to measure? We're going to measure how spread out the data is. So what are the differences between each one is the spread of the data. All right, is everybody with me? So... I really want you to understand the motivation behind doing this. We've discussed measures of center. So I have a way to figure out what the center of the data is. But if I couple that with knowing how spread out the data gets, those two numbers would really kind of give me an image of all the data without me having to look at all the data points. Does that, you guys with me a little bit? All right, a, a decent example of this. Let me give you a real life example. You guys have probably heard of the website uh, Rate My Professors. Have you guys heard of that website? There's another website that you have to pay for access to it. 
I'm not running it. So don't give me this shit. I'm not making you pay anything, but there's a website that makes you pay. You can actually see grade distributions for teachers. You guys understand? Okay. So let's say that there's two teachers. Everything is the same about the two teachers, right? They're all the same. They meet at the same time. They're the same kind of person. They're like clones of each other. Uh, they even give the same average grade. They both give an average of a C. Now, let's pretend like we're at university. What's a passing grade at university? Does anybody know? A C? No. C minus? No. No. Lower? A D. A D. A D minus is passing. Are you with me? Think about that next time you're driving over a bridge and you're like, good Lord, let this person have been the one that didn't make all D minuses. All right, now stay with me. We're not used to that at community college because C's transfer. But at university, D minuses pass. Isn't that crazy? Now, stay with me. So let's say we look at this website that tells me the grade distributions. They both give an average of a C, but one of them gives a range, like a, a spread B to D, and the other one gives a range A to F. Which one would you rather take? Now this is a, this question needs more information, right? So let me say this, if you knew you were gonna kick that class's ass, which person would you rather take, B to D or A to F? A to F. A to F, because give me that damn A. So I took a class I, at once, this, I don't know if you could tell, I'm still a little bit upset about it. I got the highest grade and he gave me a B. Urgh. So he was waiting for some DD to come along and he would still give him an A minus, but that's okay. Um, so I'd rather take the class where this person actually gives out A's. Now, if I knew I was gonna suck in that class, I would probably get take the one that doesn't fail anybody, right? The B to D, they don't seem to fail anybody. Do, do you guys follow? All right, now that's not the best example, but it's kind of one we can all relate to, but to have an idea of how spread out the data is, is remarkably useful. Okay, so there's the motivation behind what we're about to do. We are about to see where an equation comes from, right? We're gonna, we're gonna put this equation together and I love this shit and of course I do, but I really want you guys to love it too. We're gonna take math and we're gonna say, tell me what I wanna know math, right? We're gonna create this thing. We're gonna go, tell me what you know. And we're going to put it together. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm kind of hyping this thing up a lot. All right. I'll calm, I'll calm down. I'm very excited, though. This is huge. Um, so what we're about to develop is a way to measure how spread out the data is. So let me go back to this, this real quick. Which set of data, if, I, if we develop a number that represents the spread of the data, which group of data will of course have the largest spread number? Which group of data is the most spread out? C. Not C. T. I understand why you say C, but in this case, how are we defining spread? Distance away from the mean. Which one gets away from its middle more? Group D does. Does that make sense? You guys with me? So um, does that just mean like the, the higher the numbers away from the mean on either side? Yes. Okay. It's a little more technical than that, but for these simple groups, we can, we can see it like that pretty easy. So this should definitely have a very low spread number because most of them stay right on the mean. This should have a decently high spread number because a decent number of them got 
far away from the mean. So I, I want one number that'll tell me how spread the data is, right? Because I have one number that tells me where the middle is. Okay, and the one that wins, by the way, which one of these do you think wins out of all the middles? Probably not mid-range because I just told you about that today. So it doesn't seem to be that important. So I'll just tell you, this one wins. The mean wins. The median still has certain situations where it's better, but the mean is the most often best choice for center. Okay, I like maybe, maybe. You guys still with me? All right, all right, all right, here we go. So we're going to develop this formula right now. Everybody get ready. Oops, somebody just came in. All right, let me see. Do, 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 do. Who just came in? I can't tell. All right. So to do this, let me make a smaller set of data so it's a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to use uh, some data like this here. Uh, what you got, Jeff? <sighs> Stay with me now. <laughs> Who's out there getting tired? Uh, it doesn't matter, Jeff. Sure, that works. Now, um, let me let me see. Let me let me put two up here. A, B, um, one, uh, two, uh, five. Six, seven, sure. I don't know, that's kind of hard to tell. I'm sorry, let's make it different. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, sure, one, four, 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 eight. We'll just do that, make it easy. That's very easy now. Can somebody tell me, this is gonna be very close. This is gonna be very close, but which one of these should have a larger spread number. A. Yeah, the first one, just just barely, <laughs> because they're very close. All right, so not the best idea, but too bad, too bad, too bad for all of us. So what I wanna do, let me write it like this first. Let's do part A first. So this is for group A. Um, I'm gonna list all the X's like this. One, three, four, five, eight. Uh, have I made something that has a decent average? I don't think so. 4, 8, 13, 21. That kind of sucks, Jeff. All right, let me, let me see if I can, all right. Don't, don't hurt me. Can everybody do this for me? Change these eights to sevens? There we go, Jeff. Did you save it? You did. Okay. All right. Now, yeah. Is everybody with me? So make that a seven. All right. The spread is the, so here we go. Here we go. The spread will be the average distance from the mean to all of the data points. Let me say that again. I want the spread number to measure the average distance from home, from the mean, to all of the data points. So obviously, if it's a bigger number, the data gets further away from its mean. If it's a smaller number, they stay closer to the mean. Does that make sense? Okay, I like it. There were a lot of different ways they could have went with this historically. This one is the one that made the most mathematical sense. So what I need to do then, what's the very first thing I need to do then? I need to figure out what? The frequency? No, 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 no. I love you guys. So if the, if the idea is how far each data point is from the mean, I obviously have to first calculate the, the mean. 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 So can somebody really quickly for this data, what's the mean gonna be? Four. 
Four. Four. All right, if you add them all up, divide by five. You guys with me? You can double check. Yeah. All right. So the next thing here will be, all right, let me, let me get you guys to tell me. If I wanted to figure out the average age of people in this class, I have to first get a list of what? Everyone's ages. Ages. If I want to know the average income of all the people living on my street, I have to first get a list of? Income. Holy shit. So if I want to know the average distance from the mean for all my data points, I have to first get a list of what? The date. The distance. The distances. So wouldn't that be this? Sort of. We're going to make this better in a minute. Oh, OK. I get it. Sorry? Sorry? Huh? Go ahead. Um, so you want us to subtract that from four? Yeah, each one. So it'll be each data point minus four. OK. So one minus four, negative three. Three minus four, negative one. Is everybody with me? We are gonna run into trouble, I know. Just let's get there first. Four minus four is zero. Five minus four is one. Seven minus four is three. That's crazy. Now, do you guys see the problem? If I try to find the average of these, what do these all add up to be? Zero. And they'll always add to zero. Always, 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 always. Because the mean will have equal amount negative as it does positive. That's basically what the mean does. I really want you guys to understand. So, so on one level, you could say, good job, Jeff. Thanks for bringing us down this dead end. Yay, teacher. But this is a good first step. And now we go, oh, shit, I don't want the negative. So the most instinctual thing to do, what's the most direct way in mathematics to kill a negative? Add a positive. Say again? You add a positive? The, the, no. Are you multiplying with the negative? Sure, but but no, because because then I have to know if it's negative or not. I want a function. I want to be able to do something that always makes things become positive. Multiply by negative will make the positives negative. Wear it. So, okay, good, good. That's what we're actually going to do. We are actually going to square these. Does anyone have something better that we actually are not going to do because it's not really better for this? A radical. No. No. She absolute, absolute value. value. Thank you. Absolute value. And the reason we do not use absolute value here has a little something to do with. Do you, do, stay with me. We're not going to get too deep into this. Uh, does everybody agree that squaring will kill the negatives? Yes. And that's the main problem. Uh, if we square now, that means at the end, we're going to have to do what? undo that. So if I square, square now, root. I'm going to have to do a square root at the end, of course, right? Because if these are number of dogs people own, then this is square dogs. And that's some freaky shit. I don't want a bunch of little square dogs running around like I'm in Minecraft or something. I don't know. All right, maybe. I've never... I played Minecraft once. When my niece, okay, that's all. Um, the reason we don't use absolute value is got to do with the fact that absolute value kind of looks like a, a V if you graph it. Do you guys know that? If you graph absolute value, it looks like a V and that hard kink in it. Do you want to be in a plane that does this? Everybody, thanks for driving. Boom! No, you're all dead. You're all dead. So math doesn't really like this hard turn. All right, I'm not going to get too much more into that. But there is a reason we don't use absolute value normally. Some statistics could, but it's not done very often. 
So instead we square, squares go like this. We're gonna turn around now, yay, we're all alive still. Okay, good. So what do I get here, let's see. Please dear God, I don't care. If you put this in the calculator, you will get a negative answer because that's your mistake. When you square a negative real number, do you get a negative answer? No. Oh. Hell no. We know this shit, right? So don't let anything be negative here. 91019. All right. Now we do what we set out to do. I really want you guys to realize the square is the only weird thing we had to do. I still want to get the average. I want to get the average distance. Oh shit, negative square. Okay, now let me get the average square distance. How do I get the average of these? Add them all up and divide them by five. Yeah, and the symbol we have, get ready for this. It's like an R with the belly, right? So start in the belly and come around. Start at the belly. Come around, start at the belly, come around. So the belly, come around. So the belly, come around. That's how you make a sigma. So sometimes my sigmas are fat, sometimes they're skinny, but they're always freaking sigmas. Do you guys remember sigma from before? This is his uh, lowercase brother, right? This is his younger brother. This is lowercase sigma. What did uppercase sigma look like? Do you guys remember? Looks like an E. E, 11. Here it comes. Because I want to sum up. How do I get the average of these? I add these up. I add these up and then divide by five. In this case, five, but in general, n. Why is there a square here? Because we still have to square root. Okay, so I'm still finding the average. Summing these up divided by how many there are is an average, an average square distance. So at the end, we're going to square root. This, this little dude is called the variance. That is his official name. So let's see what we get. What is the sum of this? 20. The sum of x minus the mu squared is 20. So I get 20 divided by five. This is Four. beautiful. All. And so what's the standard deviation? Oh, get out of there, square. So if I square root now. Two. Two. That is the standard. This is what we call a spread. Standard deviation is the other, is the official name for spread. Okay, there's a lot that happened over there. I'm sorry. I should have sprung for the larger whiteboard and I just didn't. Arr, pass Jeff. Doesn't the calculator give you standard deviation too? Or was I, I don't not supposed to say shit. that? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. So I really want you to listen up. Listen up. You ready? For this homework and for the quiz covering this chapter, you will do this by hand. I just was after wondering. After this homework and after that quiz, we will use the calculator to get it. Is everybody with me? Um, earlier, you said that we could use the calculator on something uh, to check our answers. I just. Yeah, oh, definitely. You can, you can, you can check your answer here. I'm going to show you how to do this in a, in a bit. Okay. But I don't even want to bring it up at the moment. All right, and there's a method to my madness. I do like people to understand what goes into a number, right? So you get a better feel for the interior of a number. If you just do it in the calculator, you get a number, it doesn't mean shit to you. You don't have any connection to it. And that could just be my own it's craziness, but too bad for you. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't mean that to you personally. I've had people get really angry at me and say, my last teacher let us, I don't care what your last teacher did. I'm not that person. Now, so that means, so this little symbol, again, is the lowercase of this. It's a Greek letter 
because there's something behind the scenes here. What am I assuming this to be, considering I use this symbol for my mean? I'm using a Greek symbol for my standard deviation. Does anybody remember what that means? I'm, I've got a what? This is a... Spread. Population. I don't even know what you said there, buddy. All right. So we're going to talk about what is it? What if it's a sample? There is a difference if it's a sample. Man, I don't know how to cut my own hair. It's bad, you can tell. All right. So what's going to happen if I do all the same work for this? How will it compare to this number? How will this guy spread compared to two? <clears throat> you could do it. What did we say earlier? Which one is supposed to have the larger spread? We said this earlier. Hey. A, because it gets away from its middle more often. So this guy's standard deviation should be how related to two. Smaller, slower. Less, yeah, it should be a little less. Because it is a measure of the spread. Okay, maybe, maybe. So let's do it real quick. I, I, I don't envy you with your notes. That's too bad. You guys figure it out. It's your job. So I'm going to do all the same work again, but I'm going to do it for the second set of data. Does somebody know what this mean is? It's also four because I made this go down one and this go up one. So they still add to be the same thing. So this will still be, so now this is one, four, four, seven, one, four, 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 seven. One minus four, this is still negative three, but then this is zero, 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 three. So now when I square these, this will add up to be 18. So now the variance will be, I'm sorry. 18 divided by five, which is 3.6. And then somebody's got to help me with what the square root of that is. So it'll be 10, so it'll be six. It's gonna be just barely under two. One point. Eight nine seven. Eight nine seven? Yes. That's rounded correctly there. And this is neat. Who just said that to me? You did exactly the right thing. You ready? This is huge. Standard deviation must always be rounded to at least three decimal places. Everybody understand? So at least three, if not more. So you go to four decimal places if you want to, or five. Maybe not 18. And, uh, and, and why does this make sense? Because it's a little less than two. This is a little less spread out than this. The number that represents the spread came out a little less. Kick ass. It's doing its job. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Now, we need to talk about what happens if I have a sample, not a population. There's one little thing that's gonna change. Any questions on this here? Okay, I do have a handout that we're gonna to go to in a minute that has a worked out example of this. Uh, anyway, all right. So here's the thing. What if, so for a population, oh, you poor little marker, you're dying. The standard deviation is this. Let me see how, all right, let's see if you guys can handle this. All right. Now, so for a sample, 
What the hell's gonna happen? All right, let's talk about it. Oh shit. Let me see if you guys can get this idea. All right. In this class right now, in this class right now, there's an average age. Does everybody agree with me? I like it. What if I were to take a sample of eight people? Do you think their average age will be the same as everybody's average age? No. No. No, I would put money on it being different. Now, let me ask you this. Here's where things get interesting. Will the people in my sample that I took, will their ages be closer to the overall average or to their own average? Their own what average. Of course they would, right? Does everybody understand that? Of course they would be closer to their own average because that's their own average came from them. Therefore, I really want this to make sense. Any sample I take, if I do the same formula, I'm going to get something that's not quite right. I'm going to get smaller than I'm supposed to. Because I'm gonna, I can't use this then, can I? If I take a sample, I'm gonna calculate X bar. I'm gonna calculate a sample mean. But everybody in that sample is closer to their mean than they would be to the real mean. So if I use this exact same formula, I know my answer will more than likely be smaller than it's supposed to be. Because the distance away will be less than it's supposed to be. Let me let that sink in a little bit. So what do I do? So let me put, I don't know why I put this down there. So let me put over here. Here's what we use. I'll give you a little more insight into this. So the one thing is the same way that um, the mean is mu for a population and the mean is X bar for a sample. The standard deviation is sigma for a population, and it's S for a sample. Yay. So what do I do? If I divide by N, the answer is too small. So what we do is we divide by N minus 1 to make the answer a little bit bigger. Now, why is N minus 1 special? Let me show you. Everybody stay with me. Does that make sense right there? So, that, so we, on one level, I could stop right now and just say the n minus one is an adjustment because it's just a sample. So I can't use the same formula as a population. That's an adjustment because it's a sample. But let me go a little bit further. Stay with me. Oh man, you guys are all- Quick like, question. Yes, go for it. What does the uh, X bar symbolize? Oh shit. What does X bar symbolize? Anybody? It's a know? continuing sample. number. No, you're thinking about fraction with a bar over it. No, no, no. That's sample. not the same. Say, I'm sorry. Say it again. Sample mean. There it is. Sample mean. That's the sample mean. And mu, the little u with an extra leg, of course, is a population mean. Remember when I said population, Greek letters, sample, our letters? All right, that doesn't always hold, but it holds for the first part of this class, so what the hell? Okay, now, one last thing about N minus one. If I take a sample, all right, let's say that the average age uh, is 24, right? And I take, and I have uh, three people. Uh, let's see, uh, let me be less specific. Yeah, let me be less specific. So let's say I have three numbers, three numbers, and they average to be 10. I have three numbers and they average to be 10. 
Is there anything that must be true about any of the numbers? Does any of the numbers have to be 10? Does any of the numbers have to be positive? Does any of the numbers have to be negative? Does anything, any, could any of them be zero? Sure. Do you guys kind of see what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys understand. What is the one thing that has to happen? What's the only way to have three numbers average to be 10? Because what's the first thing you do with them? You add them up. What's the only number you divide by three to get 10? 30. 30. So we know they have to add to be 30. That is it. That is the only thing they got to do. So how many numbers can I just make up? So let's see, can I make up the first one? Sure. Eight. Yay. Somebody give me a number here. 12. 12. Look at that. You both did it at the same time. It's freaking me out. Now I got to stop, don't I? Now I got to be serious. What have, what have I summed up to so far? 20. 20. So what's the last one got to be to make it sum up to 30? 10. 10. 10. So let me ask you like this. With three numbers, how much freedom did we have? How many of the numbers were we free to do anything with? Two. Two. And then that last number is the one that makes it work right. So therefore, if I have n numbers, how many degrees of freedom do I have? I have Jeff. N minus one, holy shit, N minus one, holy shit. All right. I think you guys can get a, the feel that there's more to that story, but this is basically enough to kind of show us. There is a special reason, a special thing about N minus one. And what is it here for? To make this a better approximation for the right standard deviation. Because if I didn't do it, the answer would be smaller than it's supposed to be. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this worksheet. It's on Canvas. It's the next one right under the one that we just did. Don't worry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna break you guys up again. Don't worry. So let's take a look here. Uh, let's see, where are you? There you are. Uh, where are you? There you are. Okay. So if we go back to modules and you go down to unit two, the last worksheet there. Oh shit, I'm not a student. Wait a minute. I don't want to show too much away. Um, unit two. You can do it, Jeff. There you go, buddy. Unit two, the very last one, incredibly enough, called standard deviations. No way, Jeff. So go get that bad boy right now. Oh, thank God. Okay. All right. So let me, I'm going to open it a different way so I'm able to write on that thing. Does everybody see where to get it? Mm hmm. All right, let me stop sharing. Let me open it up a different way. Past Jeff, why didn't you open this up already? Leave me alone. Let's see. Shazbot. There it is. Okay. All right, so let me show you something. Let me show you something. Oh, shit. Where'd you guys go? There you are. All right, where's that? It's not there, it's there. Okay, okay, so one side of this, can you guys all see that? One side of this is an example, fully worked out example. Now, I want you to notice something. I'm gonna do a couple things with you in the calculator. Do you notice how I have little L1, L2 stuff? I wanna show you how to construct this table using the lists in the calculator, just in case you have to do one with a longer list of data. I'd rather let the freaking expensive ass calculator do all the work for me, please. Yes, right, not all of it, but a big chunk. Now, so let's do this. I wanna show you how to put this in the calculator and have these numbers show up for you and even how to sum them up very quickly. 
Anthony, what's up? Do you have a, are you good? Let me see. Huh? Sorry. I thought I saw you getting ready to ask something. Let me see. All right. That was on me. Okay. Let me stop sharing. I'm going to open up my calculator. I'm going to show you what this looks like in the calculator. And then I'll show you the shortcut. I'll show you how to get the answer very quickly. So check your work. All right. Here we go. It, gives, it takes it a minute for it to wake up. It's had a long weekend. There he is. All right. Let me open this up. Ooh, there's some cool shit in there. Look. Ooh. All right. Go away. So if you go, I, remember I showed you in your lists when you go to hit stat, you can hit edit. So let me clear this list. If you want to play along with me, I'm going to clear this list. All right. Now, unfortunately, shy spot. I can't see the data. Hold on. <laughs> Let me move the data over here. Oh, crappity doodah. All right, here, let's try this again. There we go. Now, I can see the data. There we go. So if I put in here one, I'm just going to put the data in there. Two, five, eight, nine. And we already know the mean. Now watch, this is very key. This is huge. This is going to be very useful a few times, a decent number of times this semester. Watch what I want to do. I want to go up to where it says L2 because now I can control the whole list. What do I want list two to be? I want list two to be all the X's minus the mean and all the X's are in list one. So I want list two to be all the stuff in list one, see second one for list one, minus the mean, which is five. Bam. And then I want list three. Did you do that? Sorry? How'd you do that? Let me do it I'm again. I'm at the second, I clicked second. All right, hold on. So go up to L2, hit okay. second one, because that's where L1 is, is right above one. So that's where all the X's are, minus the mean, which is five. All right, you would have already figured out the mean before you went here. Enter. Well, that's pretty cool. An, you think? Did anyone get an error or anything? I got an error. Uh, your error normally is because you don't have the list highlighted. You're trying to put a whole list into one spot. So did you highlight list two first? Yeah. What kind of, what's the error say? Um, yeah, let me try it again. And Index. See it'll pop up again. So let me do this again. Let's go to L2, second one minus five. So that's all the X's are in list one minus the mean, which is five. Oh, there we go. I put in the wrong minus. Yeah, that I figured as much. So syntax error very often is a, you put the wrong negative thing in there, yeah. And then I want L3 to be all of these squared. So that'll be L2 squared. Bam, so that's where I get those from. All right, I like it. And, and now, just to show you again. So, so now we've got, oh, come on, Jeff. Please let me go back in the classroom. All right. Now I've got these numbers here, right? So if I want to add these, I need to add up all of these. And again, this is not a big list. This is, I wouldn't do this for this list. It's a small list. Who gives a shit? I don't need the help. But for a longer list, please give me the calculator. Please let me do that, Jeff. So let me show you how to sum up a list. Here's where I go. Where'd you go? There you are. Do you see above stat where it says list? So when I go second stat, go to list. Oh shit, did I do this wrong? Let me see something. Yeah, damn it. So you gotta, you gotta get out of your list first. You gotta get out of your list. And the way you do that is it's second mode. See where it says quit? That's such a useful thing. Second mode, it gets you back to the normal home screen. 
Okay, now stay with me, stay with me. If I hit second, stat to go to list, now I can do math on my lists. I can sum my lists. And which list do I want to sum? I want to sum up list three. And that's where you get the 50 from. Okay, maybe, maybe. And that's really only if you have a very long list of data. Otherwise, I wouldn't do all that. But that's a way to make the calculator work for you, right? Notice also, How did you I'm not hearing any. Three? Yes, go ahead. How did you put in list three? I got to sum, but. Oh, yeah. So the lists are right above the corresponding number. So you hit second three for list three. Got it. I like it. All right, now let me show you. Back on the paper. So then I could fill in the formula. And we're going to be working with samples a lot more often than populations. So we're going to use this formula much more often than the sigma formula, right, for populations. So this is definitely a sample. So I've got to use the over n minus 1. And then you square root it just like we did earlier. So this whole thing right here is the same thing we did earlier. Okay. Um, when I did the sum thing on the calculator, it gave me another error. Okay. D did uh... it says um, check one uh, greater less than dimensionless uh, nine nine nine. Whoa. Did you remember to get out of your list before you did it? Like, yeah, that was a mistake I almost made uh, was I was in my list. So I hit second quit first. Yeah, I think it's just because I'm using some weird sketchy calculator online. Um, <laughs> yeah, because so. that's a new one on me. I've never heard of that syntax error before. Yeah, I uh, have to do it the long way, maybe. Yeah. All right. So what I want you guys to do. Uh, and I know some of these questions get a little bit weird, but the main thing is to get the standard deviation done. Uh, the other side of this paper is another problem that's not done. So I want you guys to do it. Uh, so on the other side, if you go to the other side, there we go. Look at this. Yeah, look at this. Yummy. So I want you guys to do this problem right now. What time is it? Yeah. This will be the last thing we do today. Right. In fact, maybe I'll, maybe we'll do this one together. Why not? Let's do this together. If you guys have your calculators, sketchy or otherwise, go ahead and put the data into list one. Everybody's able to access this, right? I'm going to stop sharing this so I can put it in my calculator. Okay, here we go. All right, let me see. So go ahead and put that data into list one, and then I'll, we'll do this together just because we're almost out of time. Shaisam. Uh, this is on modules. Oh, is somebody asking where to find it? Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Yeah, it's in the same place we got the worksheet we worked on earlier. All right, so let me share this here. All right, so just get all the data in the list one. You don't have to sort it, but I'm going to sort it just because I like to I like to sort it. Do you guys remember how to sort the data? Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, how do I clear the this one? Oh, so to clear a list, you go, you highlight the list, you hit clear, enter. Don't hit delete or it will destroy your list. But I have the old list up. I have I have the one from the um, example. I don't care. 
So yeah, if you want to clear a list, highlight the list like this, right? And then hit clear, enter. Is that, that's what you're asking? I think he wants to delete all the numbers. Oh. Yeah, that's how you do it. You go to the list, you hit clear, enter, and all the numbers will go away. Wait. So make sure that you hit up. So you're highlighting the list. Hit the clear button. Enter. Is it working? Yeah. OK. Now to sort list one, I hit stat, sort A, number two, and I tell it list one. You don't have to sort it to do this, but it's just easier to organize things. So now if we go back in, it's all nice and in order. Is everybody with me? Can somebody go ahead? Has anybody figured out the mean for this data yet? I got 6.5. Good. Exactly right. And I told you not to round. Now think about it. If the standard deviation is the average distance from the mean and we round our mean too much, that changes where the reference point is, right? So my standard deviation could be very far off then. Does that make sense? You don't want to round your mean. You actually don't want to round it at all if you can, but you definitely don't want to round it too much. Is everybody with me? Because that would throw your standard deviation off quite a bit. All right. So now what I want to do, I want to call I need the, the next thing I need is all the differences, the data point minus the mean. So I'm going to make L2, go up to L2. I'm going to make it all of my data points minus the mean, 6.5. Right, so all my data points are in list one. I want each of them minus the mean. Enter. How's everybody doing? You guys okay out there? You don't want me to know? Okay. That's fun or whatever. All right. Oh, wait. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what did you put in for L2 again? The... All right, let me do it again. So I know that uh, the first step in standard deviation is to find how far away each data point is from the means. The very first thing I do after I get the data in list one, I want list two to be all of my data points, second one, all of my data points, list one, uh. minus the mean, right? That's X minus X bar, right? When I say X, that means list one. That's where all the X's are, right? And that's how I get all this here. I got it. And then the very next thing I want to do, of course, what do we figure out? Because if I summed up list two, I would get zero. So of course, what do we want to do immediately to list two. Square it. Yeah, so now I wanna to go to list three and I wanna make it list two squared. Okay, I like it. And now what do I need to do with all of this in list three? Let's come back to my sheet so the last thing here's list three it's all those things we just got and of course now i want to add them up right so let me come back to the calculator this kind of sucks i got to go back and forth but oh well how do i get that done in my calculator i go second mode to quit. I get the hell out of my list and I can go to list so I can tell it to do something to my third list. I'll go to list, second stat. Now I can do some math to one of my lists. Go to math. I can sum up one of my lists and the list I want to sum is L3.
Oh shit, I moved the wrong thing. Come here. There we go. All right, so we get 69. Let me put that on the page. Okay, now. So when we sum this up, we sum up all these things, we get 69. So when I plug that into the formula, here's where people make the biggest mistake. You're so used to this from algebra, I can't really blame you. But what do I replace? What in this formula, where do I put 69 in this formula? Some. What? Yeah, in fact, this whole thing, that whole thing is just that number. We're so used to putting stuff in for X, but I can't do that because X is all of these things at once. But when I add up these things, I get 69. And what do I put underneath? 11. Good, because there are 12 people. 12 minus one, I got 11. So, so far, what do I have for the sample variance? 2.273. Yeah, let me show you something cool. I'm going to stop sharing here. Oh, man, this is crazy. Where are you? There you are. So let me show you something. So if you do 69 divided by 11, you get all that craziness, right? I think I showed you this before. I then want to take a square root of that. So if I hit second squared to get square root, uh-oh. Wait, we have to we have to get the square root because it's um, continuing. Because it's still squared from before. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and somebody's asking because what's on the bottom of the formula n minus one and how many data points were there? Twelve. Twelve. So n minus one would be twelve minus one eleven. So n always means the total number of data points. All right, now, if I want to do the screw to this number, but I don't want to write this whole stupid number, I could just hit second negative. That ANS button holds the last number on screen. So that is my standard deviation right there. Go ahead and write that down. Now, let me show you the shortcut, or not the shortcut even, the way to check your work. Here's how to check your work. In fact, I, I think I showed you this already. Remember when I showed you how to check your five number summary? Does anyone remember that? Yeah. Yes. So if you go to stat calc, one variable statistics. Look at the very first few things it tells you. Well, I'll tell it list one. There's no frequency list. Calculate. What's that? That's, of course, the, the mean. Go down a little bit. Look what it does. Why does it give you both of these? because it's dumb. It's a dumb calculator. It says, here you go, human. You take the one. And what are we working with? We're working with a sample. So which one do we know is the right one? This one. And isn't this the number we just got? Yes. I love it. Now, right now is where somebody either verbally says this or says it in their own head. Why did we do all that work when I could just do this? Uh, well, because that's what learning is. <laughs> So I'm sorry, it's too damn bad, right? But at least you have a way to check your work. You have a way to check your work. I love it. So if it was a population, I would use this number instead. And just to remind you guys, the last thing it shows you here, remember this, this is the five number summary, right? That we use for box plots. All right, let me stop sharing. Let me do this. Where, I don't. There it is. Uh, there's more on this sheet, but I didn't even give us a break. I want us to. I want us to leave now. Let me. We'll finish this up next time. But let me also say this: Don't leave yet. Um, what do we have happening a week from today? Quiz. 
quiz. And what I have done right now as I am talking is I have, oh shit. Who's, yes, there you go. Uh, I have done this. Let me go there. If you go back to Canvas right now, this does not include a, um, let me show you the first, see right here, section 2.1 to 2.6 practice. So this is actually from an old practice test back in the day when we were on campus. So this is just some practice from 2.1 through 2.6. Uh, I could have made, I don't know why I didn't do this. Oh, well, too bad, Jeff. But yeah, that's the way it is. So. Um, that's up there right now. If you want to do some extra practice, I'm going to put the answer key up later, like over the weekend, maybe, or on Monday. We'll see how I feel or if I remember. Um, so that's there for you if you want to do that in addition to homework, some extra practice for the quiz next Wednesday. And we'll finish up the, the worksheet that we started on. We'll finish that up on Monday because I think we've done enough today. Any, anybody, if you guys want to need to hang out and ask questions, let me know. Otherwise, you are free to go. Uh, yes. I have a question about yes. the homework. So 2.3 for 20, question 25. Let's uh, see. Uh, is this, is, this you, is this one that you turned in? Uh, no, not yet. No, okay. okay. So two, three, 25. Oh, you weren't, you must not have been here earlier. The one about Jesse? The one about, uh, here, let me oh, show Oh, yeah. You. Yeah, so we talked about that one earlier. Um, what would be the best ranking? If he was ranked, uh, what, what would be the best? If he was ranked, what? Um, like a first. First, first would be the best. So he's ranked thirty seventh. Percentiles mm -hmm. are all about the percentages below you. So how many people are ranked below Jesse? Uh, below us uh, sixty three. No, no, no. Be careful. There's a hundred and eighty students. Ah, uh, it's 143. 143 students are below him out of 180. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then you're done. Once oh. you make that percentage, you're done. Yeah. So is that is a rank, ranking? Is a 100, 143? Is it? answer yeah remember percentiles are all about the percentage below some given value so you got to first figure out how many are below jesse mm -hmm. and then you can do that divided by 180 to make it a percentage and that that's the percentile the percentage below something okay so do we have quiz this week no what did we just say the quiz is next Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. So I got a practice thing up on Canvas if you want to. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How's everybody else? You guys good? A bit confused on the calculator part, but I could review that on the uh, YouTube video. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, either way. Um, all right, guys. I don't see any questions. I'm going to. Oh, I yes. have a question. Sorry. Yes. I'll wait until you finish talking. Um, it's for uh, the homework 2.2. Um, I don't know how, I know what they are, but I don't know how to explain it. Uh, question number 15, where it's asking the difference between um, frequency and relative frequency. Like, yeah. like how to explain it, I guess. I don't know if it's wanting you to spend it based on the model or just. No, no, just in general, in general, oh, I mean, okay. yeah, so relative frequency is just changing the frequency into a what? Cumulative? No, 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 
There's nothing about right. cumulative frequency in 15 yet. So the frequency, if I had 80 total things and the frequency in one class was five, how would I get the relative frequency? So 80 total and what's the five again? That's five the frequency. frequency you would divide five. it? Yeah, divide five divided by 80, right? Yeah. That makes it into a percentage of the total. So frequency is a pure number. Relative frequency is a percentage. Percentage. Uh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Actually, can I ask one more, more thing? Yes. What's up? So about homework. Yes. It's okay, with you? Yes. So, so it is like a two point four, two point four and ninety. It is right. really, yeah. 90, there it is, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so the problem with this, let me put it up here. The problem with this is the way they've put the data actually makes it kind of harder. Yeah. You see how there's five zeros and there's nine ones, mm -hmm. right? So how much total, so there's 25 total data points, right? Yes. So what do you need for a box plot? What do you have to calculate? Uh, so we need like a quarter. To the you need the lowest data point. You need the yeah, five want... number summary, right? Yeah, the yeah. Lowest, the Q1, Q2, Q3. Q2, yeah. So here's the way you could do this. To figure out Q1, you would have to do 25% of 25, right? Yeah. 25%, 25. So, you remember, so to do a percentile, how do we calculate a percentile? We do the percentage of how many data points there are. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. It is. Now, you could be very intelligent about using the fact that there's five zeros and nine ones, mm -hmm. or you can write zero five times and then one nine times and then count. Uh, uh, count. Just count. Yeah, because remember your percentiles, you, you do the percentage. Mm -hmm. And then if you get a whole number, you take that one with the next one, you average it. If you get a decimal, you round it up and you take that number, right? So it's yeah. all about figuring out which one is the eighth number or which one is the 15th number or whatever. Oh. You could do it with the way they've done it. If I had to get the 13th number, wouldn't that be a one? Do you see how the 13th number is a one? Because the first 14 are zeros and then ones. Or you have to write five zeros, nine ones, six two, so then you can count through um, them. Yeah, so you so can be I got creative. like, oh, Sorry? so I got like Q1. Q1 is like a seven. It's yeah, because 25%. Yeah, yeah, so I'm it's actually, round is seven. So what's the seven? seventh number? Seven number is. Uh, is a one? Yeah, That's because correct. the first five are zeros and then the next nine are one. So the seventh number is a one. Good. Keep going. The, but the point is I need to draw the plot. Yeah, so plot. you can't draw the box plot until you know the, the lowest Q1, Q2, Q3, and the highest, because then you can draw the lines and make the box. So draw, plot. draw the line like zero, zero and zero to four, you mean? Yes. Uh, deviation. Because the lowest is zero, the highest is four, but then you have to know where to draw the lines in the middle to make the box, right? Oh, yeah, you right. You have to first figure out the low Q1, Q2, Q3 high are, and then you can draw the lines, make the box. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you say you have a question? <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. That was fun. Oh, Justin, what's up? So, um, I so you graded our quiz one already, right? I, I'm curious. Yes. Okay, cool, cool, okay. No question. All right. Who else? What, what else we got? You guys, all right? What's up? I have a question. Yes. Um, I don't know if I, I don't know part C on the uh, worksheet number two. When is I'm not sure how to do that last part. The X minus that part. 
So if you look at the example, remember there's a whole worked out problem, right? Yes. So how many standard deviations from the mean to the data point means how many of these fit into the distance between the mean and the data point? So that's where that formula comes from. So I, I'm interested in the data point of two. So it would be the X value is two minus the mean divided by how spread out the data is. So for us, for this problem, what data point am I interested in in part C here? I'm not sure. Yeah, you are. What's the, the, what data point is C talking about? 6.5. No, 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 no. Question C, right? What data point is it talking about? Eight. Yes, right. Oh. It says the data point of eight. So I want to know eight. So that's the data points. That's what goes in for X. And I want to know how many standard deviations fit between the data point and the mean. Now, of course, like I said earlier, we are going to, I am going to explain this formula more on Monday because we've got to finish up this okay. sheet. Yeah. But that's so, the idea. But the mean for that with the X on the top, the mean is the 6.5? Yeah, that's the mean. That's the sample mean. Okay. And then divided and by the spread, which was 2.504, is that 504. what it was? Yes. Okay, oh, I got it. I'm trying to do this with my mouse, so it looks kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got it. And then part D gets a little freakier, so just, we'll, we'll do that first thing on Monday. Okay. Okay. All right. Have a good one. You too. Everybody else all right? I'm going to head out. All right, guys. I'm out of here.